because we did not have the capacity to know the father jesus came to reveal the father jesus came that we may have life and have it abundantly so where does this life come from can we say knowing the father knowing the father can you say knowing the father one more time knowing the father knowing the father is eternal life that's it that's why paul constantly in the bible constantly says in the knowledge of jesus christ in the knowledge of our lord jesus christ in the knowledge of god in the knowledge of god in the knowledge of jesus christ how is our mind renewed the mind is renewed by the but the the, the the transformation comes from the renewal of mind by the knowing who god is knowing him knowing him knowing him hearing the word of god gives us faith so constantly paul is talking about the knowledge the epignosis the epignosis what is epignosis the experiential knowledge of knowing the father of knowing god is the source of life why do you feel strengthened when you read the bible see without explain it you can't even explain right when you pray when you read the bible when you pray in tongues you're connecting to the father you are when you meditate when you spend time in your quiet time why do you feel why do you feel um, energized when you receive a word from god when god is speaking to you why do you get energized because that is our original source of life amen say this with me source of life god is our source of life this jesus said i am the vine you are the branches anyone who abides in me see the father and him are in one another me in the father and the father in me so when you are abiding in jesus you are automatically abiding with the father and the father son holy spirit they are the source of life and jesus the bible say calls him he is the fountain of life he is the one who gives life amen he is the the and the holy spirit he is the river of life that flows in and through us so knowing the father walking in intimate epignosis epignosis relationship with him releases life that is the source of our life jesus jesus said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of god the more god speaks to you the more god reveals his will to you the more life begins to function in your life amen we always thought that life was in the bios life was in the blood but for a christian your life is no longer in your blood your life comes from the fountain of life jesus your life is from your spirit bios may be there in your blood in your body but when you become a new creation the primary life the main source of life that you now function from comes from your spirit because jesus is the author and the beginner amen author and the finisher of your faith he's the one who started this he's the one who gave you this life he's the author of your life he is the one who 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 helps you to function he is the one who 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 produces the life in you and that life is in your spirit that is the life that father wanted adam to experience and that life adam would have experienced through the knowledge of the father this is eternal life to know the father amen today how do we know the father through jesus for adam he had a continuous unbroken relationship with the father 
but the fall of adam required atonement if adam had in fall if, uh, fallen he wouldn't have needed atonement right what is our need of atonement what jesus did i think robin said it correctly he said he reconciled us to the father he came to remove the separational sin by becoming sin he destroyed sin amen that's correct robin you know reconciled us and i think you you you've been hearing me say this word again and again reconciliation reconciliation so it's all in your mind right now you're understanding that i'm reconciled back to the father we were separated but that separation was not because god said hey i created you i am god now you have to worship me you have to obey me if you disobey me i'm going to punish you that is the mindset we had that is an image of an angry god an insecure god who created you and because you didn't listen to him he's going to punish you that god doesn't make sense to me you want to say what i'm saying this god was created by religion this god hey if you don't obey god is going to punish you so i'm going to go through god will punish you god will do this to you see the wages of sin is death sin has its consequences sin brings death the reason why god doesn't want you to live in sin because he knows the consequences of sin is death the end of it is death god is not a god who says okay you know what i created you you're not listening to me so because you're not going to you're not listening to me i'm going to punish you and send you to hell but that is the image that we have of the father you understand what i'm saying so he created adam it seems in the in the penal substitution so i will i will put it very plainly what penal substitution says penal substitution says god created man man didn't listen so god got angry and wanted to punish him but he also loves him hmm i want to punish him badly i want him to suffer and die but i also love him so what to do okay wait let me send my son hey son go and die i i love them very much i don't want to kill them listen to this i love them very much i don't want to kill them and that is where they bring in the justice of god see god is a just god so because he is a just god justice must be you he has to make sure that justice is met see how some somehow somehow he wants to bring justice so what does he do he said son i want to kill them because of justice because i'm a just god but at the same time i don't want to kill them because i love them so instead of them you go and die suffer and die and then on the cross the father looked at jesus and said it seems you're disgusting because you became sin so how can you be sin when he turned his face away because jesus become disgusting to the father and he was because he was full of sin and jesus became all our moral sins all of that no matter the bible says that jesus became our moral sin the bible just says he became sin hmm he became sin which means he was separated from the father i'm not getting what i'm saying and then afterwards he separated and then he became sin and the sin of the whole world came upon him that is a very individualistic way of looking at things the bible says when one man died all died jesus is death was not an individual's death it was the collective death of all creation 
You're getting what I'm saying? The Bible says when Jesus died, we died. The way we must look at his death is our death. The way we must look at his burial is our burial. The way we must look at his resurrection is our resurrection. Yes, I will, I, will, I will let you ask a question. Save that thought. Save that question. I will, I will, I will tell you. All right, thank you. So let me just finish it a little bit and then I'll let you ask that question. So Jesus, says death, burial, resurrection was our death, burial, resurrection as well. That is why the Bible says, we have been what? Crucified with Christ. Look, the Bible is very clear. He said, we have been crucified with Christ. It is not a metaphorical thing. In the sight of God, we were literally crucified with Christ. We were buried with him. We are resurrected with him into the new birth, into the new life. Amen. So it is not an individual's death that gave us salvation. He consumed us. We were consumed in his death. We died with him. We entered into the death of deaths with him. We were buried with him. And the old man was buried and left there. And Jesus resurrected with each and every one of you as a new creation. The whole of the creation, every human being was resurrected with him. And when we were resurrected with him, we became a new creation. The father had reconciled all his children to himself through Christ Jesus. Through his death, burial, resurrection. That those who believe in Jesus might partake of this eternal life. Amen. Now, how does this eternal life come? Through our faith in Jesus. Why was it given to us? Because of the grace of God. Amen. So the model that I am teaching now, what I'm sharing with you now is the understanding that it was the collective death, burial, resurrection of each and every one of us who died with Christ. See, in the penal substitution plan, they believe that when Adam sinned, we all now are in sin, right? Through one man, death entered. But the Bible says, the second Adam came as a life-giving spirit, not as a living soul. Adam was a living soul. He became. He was just a living soul. He was. He did not become a life-giving spirit. Jesus comes as the life-giving spirit, with the sole purpose of reconciling us back to the Father. Reconciliation. Reconciliation. Taking us back to the Father. Not punishment waiting to happen. He says, Jesus, Father, Father, wait, wait, wait. Don't hit them. Hit me instead. No, no. Father is waiting for Jesus to reconcile. Nowhere in the Bible, the Bible says, Father poured his wrath on Jesus. Nowhere. Show me one verse where it says the wrath was poured on Jesus. Nowhere. No, what? Not one verse. You flip the Bible inside out. Nowhere the Bible says, but we all say it. The wrath of God was poured upon Jesus. I'll give fifty dollars to someone who will give show me a verse. Who can show me a verse where it says, Father poured the wrath on Jesus. It was a loving father who sent his son, said, son, I love my children. I want to reconcile them back to me. I want them to know that I love them. And the only way that they can know me is through you. Amen. Is if you die, they die with you. When you are buried, they are buried with you. When you are resurrected, 
they are resurrected with you and when they believe in you you live in them and you are able to reveal me to them what is the work of jesus the jesus reveals the father to us jesus said what did he say unless i reveal the father and no one can know jesus unless the father reveals him amen so the by the help of the holy spirit we believe in jesus the faith comes into our hearts when we the bible says faith comes by hearing hearing the good news of the gospel wow jesus did this for me that's why people who are not even christian who have never ever heard the gospel you tell them about this gospel they be like man i want to believe in this that is the work of the holy spirit they might not even have read anything you don't have to explain church history to them just tell them about the love of jesus suddenly they are like man i want to know this jesus where does it come from the father is revealing his son to them that's why jesus said to peter flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but my father in heaven has revealed who is his father the holy spirit he calls his holy spirit my father who is in me Amen. So the Holy Spirit reveals Him to us, Jesus to us, and we believe in Jesus. And the moment we believe in Jesus, the reality, the truth that we were buried with Christ, we were crucified with Christ, we were buried with Christ, and when we believe in the resurrection, we also are resurrected with Him. That reality, that truth becomes our reality. Amen. Are you with me? it's like let's say it's, i put 1 million dollars in simeon's account i already finished it but he doesn't believe it and 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 you didn't do it but i would have done it it's up to you now to accept the truth as your reality amen something greater than 1 million dollars has come eternal life amen he has already given us eternal life he has already given us life all we have to do is believe that he has already done it and because everything in the christian life is accessed through faith everybody say access through faith amen that is why we are saved by faith through grace amen we are saved through grace I mean through faith by because of the grace of god amen we are saved by faith it is our faith in jesus we are saved so when we say saved it doesn't mean that when you when you accept jesus god decided to save you that day no god has already saved you he has already given you the life but when you say salvation it means the day you realized that god has already saved you say salvation is the day i come to realization that god has already reconciled me back to the father that is the good news the good news is not wait hey listen man you you are a sinner god hates you go and uh, ask for forgiveness then god will forgive you no big no 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 look man you are living in sin doesn't matter god has already forgiven you why he has forgiven you because he loves you because of grace how can i receive this believe that he has already finished the work for you that's all yes and when you believe in his death burial and resurrection and you believe in the lordship of jesus he becomes now your lord amen and when he now becomes then what do we believe in we believe that he was god raised him from the dead but supernaturally the holy spirit gives us the ability to believe in the resurrection of christ it is not just his resurrection now it becomes your resurrection also amen say this with me the resurrection becomes my resurrection how are you becoming a, a new creation unless through the resurrection of christ see it is not you who by your strength was resurrected christ has already finished the work and resurrected every human being our faith in him now on in today makes that reality that truth our reality the true the reality that jesus made available 2000 years ago becomes our reality when the truth of god's word is preached 
And that is why we have to preach the good news. What is the good news? Jesus has finished the work. What must I do to be saved? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. What is that salvation? Salvation is the day I realize that I am set free. Amen. The day I, the who, uh, the who the sun set sh, uh, sets free shall be free indeed. But the truth is, he has already set you free. But if you keep believing that you are in bondage, then the devil will keep you in bondage. If you keep believing that you are under under curse, the devil will keep you under a curse. But the more you grow in the knowledge, so now, of course, you know, salvation, and after salvation, we grow in the knowledge. The more we grow in the knowledge, the more life is released into us. Amen? Ephesians. Let's go to Ephesians. And Joseph, I will get back to you. I will, I will, I will let you ask me that question in about two minutes. Ephesians. Chapter number one. Chapter number one. You know, I'll read from 17 later, but um, 17, it's beautiful. When you begin to read these verses from the, the, the understanding that I'm giving you, you will begin to see the riches of God's grace and his glory. And it's like, wow, you will marvel at his, his, his goodness. Amen. Verse 19. Ephesians chapter one, verse 19. If you're there, can I read it for you? I re I've read this verse again and again and again and again. I don't know how many times I read this for you guys. But I'm going to read it again. I want to drive this verse into your spirit so you understand. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power? Look at this. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? Towards us who? Believe. According to the working of his mighty power. So there is a power that works in you when you believe. See, when you believe, don't just think God is passive. Oh, come on, somebody. Slap somebody right now. The excitement you have, you want to slap somebody. Say, wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. How can you be so timid? No, no, no. Slap somebody and say, wake up. There is a power that is actively It is an active power. There is a power. Dunamis. What is dunamis? Dunamis is not like a passive power. It is an active, ongoing power that works when you believe. Amen. Every time you believe, it's like electricity that passes between heaven and earth. Amen. There is a power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Verse 20. Which he worked in Christ. There is a power that he worked in Christ. Okay. There was a power that God worked in Christ when he raised Christ from the dead. And seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Imagine the power that required to raise a man with no blood in his veins. Dead for three days. No blood. Body was beaten and broken beyond recognition. The only mark on Jesus' body was in his hands and feet and ribs. He kept them to show this is the mark. Amen. Every but but before his resurrection, everything was marred, everything was destroyed completely. But imagine every drop of his blood was outside his body. That when they pierced him, only water came out, there was no more blood. It is impossible to raise such a man back to life. But the Bible says that there was a power that worked in the resurrection of Christ and not only resurrected him but ascended him up into heaven. And seated him at the right hand of the Father. Imagine the power. Imagine the power. 
and gave him a name that is above every other name that at the mention of the name of Jesus, every tongue should confess, every knee should bow, and every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. Every demon, every Satan must bow down to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Every kingdom and king in this world must bow down to the name of Jesus. Every political party, everybody should bow down to the name of Jesus. Every immigration department must bow down to the name of Jesus. Every job opportunity that you get, every interview that you get that God has for you, when you declare the name of Jesus and believe by faith, there is a power that is at work when you believe. There there is a power that surges through your faith that when you believe, your faith will get you through because there is a power actively working, dunamis, that is actively working for you for those who believe. Hallelujah. That power is not only working right now, but it worked 2,000 years ago. It worked when it raised Jesus from the dead. And the moment you believe in Jesus, that same power lifts you up, raises you, and makes you sit with Christ. And that reality becomes your truth. That he walked in Christ when he raised him from the dead, seated him at the right hand in heavenly places. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Verse 21. That is why I tell you, demons and devils and demons are no, no, they are, they are non players in our life. They are non players in our life. Depressive thoughts are non players in your life. Failure is a known player in your life. Oh, every form of brokenness is a known player in your life. Every form of sickness is a known player in your life. Get this inside your first spirit. Get this inside of your mind. Just begin to renew your mind and begin to reign and rule as the way God wants you to reign and rule. Amen. We reign and rule not because we just say it, because we believe it. It goes into our system. It goes into our spirit. We just know who we are. The death of Jesus was your death. The burial of Jesus was your burial. That old man is dead. That is why I tell people, a Christian is not a sinner saved by grace. A Christian is a new creation. Born of the word. Born of the spirit. Into the kingdom of glory. Hallelujah. Nothing like me existed before. The day I said I believe in Jesus, that very second, the old me ceased to exist, died. The new me that came out of the word, the new me that came out of the resurrection is the Christian. Hallelujah. Say this with me. The new me that came out of the resurrection is the Christian. Christianity was birthed at a resurrection. There is a resurrection power. That is the power that raised Jesus from the dead. Ascended him to heaven. When you realize this truth, no matter what big demon comes into your life, you just look at the demon and say, get lost. I don't have time for you. Please. I don't want to raise my voice. Just go. Just go. Before I cause some serious damage. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Know who you are. You are born out of the resurrection. You are born out of the resurrection. Verse 21. Raised us up and made us sit in his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion. Oh, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And put and he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church. We are the church. Amen. Everything is under our feet. This earth is under our feet. Everything that is in this earth is under our feet. We need to bring death under our feet. We need to bring sickness under our feet. We need to bring poverty under our feet. We need to bring 
child child abuse under our feet we need to bring pornography under our feet we need to bring the sex industry under our feet we need to bring prostitution under our feet we need to bring uh, uh, kidnapping under our feet we need to bring drug addiction under our feet we need to bring every evil in this world under the feet of the church i'm not here to preach doom and gloom i'm here to preach hope a lot of people <laughs> now is no no disrespect but a lot of people think the world is getting worse and the church is losing and they believe that the antichrist will rule the earth and dominate the earth and you know the church will finally be go through the tribulation and finally they'll be so lost and broken and suddenly Jesus will come and rescue them and take them to heaven but the bible says the last enemy death will be defeated how can the church be defeated how can the church be defeated how can the church be defeated if Jesus has already finished the work on the cross for us how can the church be defeated how can the spirits of the world overcome the uh, overcome the church the papa says here that he has put all things under our feet either we believe the words of jesus or we don't there is a lot of work to do because now everybody wants to preach doom and gloom because it's the easy way out easy to explain you don't have to fight to prove that god has already made us victors but god is looking for a generation that will begin to see these in the scriptures that hey man i am birthed out of the resurrection i'm born of god jesus as death was my death his burial was my burial is the resurrection was my resurrection i am born out of the resurrection and when i'm born out of the resurrection the bible says there is a power that worked in him and it has also worked in me to lift me up and made me sit with him and that dunamis is at work in me every time i believe amen that dunamis is at work in me every time i believe is there a prophet in this house there is there a prophet in this generation who will believe the word of god and decree and declare and change his theons and change the world and say this is what the word of god says i want to see prophets and apostles raised in the house of god in 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 life of church who decree and declare and 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 transform the yawns that we live in hallelujah when people are talking about about how the world is going to end and god is going to take away the church and you know let the church escape through rapture i want to see prophets who raise and and dynamically say no we are here to reign and rule we are here to declare the word of god we are here to come against coronavirus we are here to come against every government that tries to oppress the church the church is not a building the church is not an organization the church is not an institution the church is the body of christ the church is the powerhouse of god we are raised with christ we are resurrected with christ we are seated with christ when we speak it is as if god speaks when we declare it is as if god declares when we speak, take a stand it is as if god takes a stand which is why when you go for your interviews so when you begin to apply for your things uh, look at that application form and say hey application form you will listen to me you will go out there and you will do your work you will listen to me i cannot be broke uh, i cannot be sick uh, i will do what god has called me to do go and begin to declare what god has called you to do take your place and your position spiritually align assign, align yourself with the word of god be aligned with jesus and know that the jesus i will be with you not for you to suffer not for you to go through tribulation to hell with tribulation to hell with the devil i'm all about bringing heaven on earth we're all about speaking life this season begin to speak into every area of your life that you're struggling with 
Know that you are born of God, born of the Spirit of God. Know that your life is now not in your blood, but in your spirit. You are a spirit man. You are from heaven. Your life comes from above. He that is from above. Is above all things. Amen. Say this with me. I'm above all things. I'm above all things. Anything is possible for him who believes. Why is it possible for him who believes? That the Bible says here in Ephesians chapter 1, when I believe, there is a power that worketh in me. That mighty power that worketh in me. Come on, somebody say, that mighty power that worketh in me. That is the power that worketh in you. That's why the more you grow in the knowledge of God, you, you feel the peace. You feel rested. Don't just make it. Don't just go to God when you when you need God. Every day there is a constant flow of His life. Every day there is a waterfall of His love, of His connection, His power that is available for you. If only you open up your spirit. You you can be at work. You can be driving. You can be sleep. You can be lying on your bed. You can be cooking at home. You can open up your spirit to 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 let that power work in you. Meditate on this. Meditate on this. And keep listening to these messages. Keep listening and reading the verses that I keep telling you. Uh, I've, been, I've been sitting on Ephesians chapter 1 for the last one month. <laughs> I've not read any, I promise, I've not read anything else except Ephesians chapter 1 of the entire month. Only one chapter I read. Yes, I've not read anything else. Just Ephesians chapter 1. Just Ephesians every day. Just Ephesians chapter 1. That's it. I don't need anything else right now. <laughs> Pastor, you're not reading 10 chapters a day? No. I'm reading this. Again and again and again and again and again and again and again. I'm receiving more power than those people who read 10 chapters religiously because there is something I'm receiving from just reading one chapter. It's not about the quantity of the chapters you read. It's about the revelation that you receive from the word of God. And there is a power, there is a mighty power right now available. I want to re just receive it right now. In the name of Jesus, let your mind be open to receive the understanding. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 La Rosi Kamanda Dili Ozo Komasatari E Katama in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Joseph, you had a question you can ask now. Joseph, you had a mm. question you can ask now. Yep. Um, I noticed when I was reading the New Testament that um, Paul talks a lot about being united with Christ. Yeah. Um, he doesn't talk a lot about heaven, though. Whereas yeah. in church, it's kind yeah. of the opposite. It's kind of like, oh, when you die, you go to heaven and it's all great. But there isn't much talk. It's like being united with Christ is a secondary thing. Yeah. Um, so that's not the case, though, is it? It's united with Christ is the primary thing. Like, that's the good part. Yes. Yes. See, um, heaven, when you say heaven right now, Heaven is not our eternal place. Because number one, heaven is also a created place. Heaven is not eternal. So when we say eternal life, God is not talking about our life in heaven. Eternal life is Zoe life that is in the Father, Son, Holy Spirit and he wants to share that life with us. How God shares that Zoe life which is eternal life which is within the Father, Son, Holy Spirit the God kind of life, the God quality life how does he share it with human beings is when human beings come in the knowledge of God. That is what God offered Adam 
Adam failed and therefore needed redemption and redemption needed atonement. And we saw the atonement plan. We just saw it in the beginning that we don't, you know, uh, I showed you how the penal substitution says that God wanted to punish Jesus, but we saw that God didn't punish Jesus. God didn't pour his wrath on Jesus, but Jesus' death, burial, res resurrection was a reconciliation of man back to the Father because of the fall of Adam. Because when Adam sinned, all, we all sinned. Right? We all fell into sin. We were born in sin and we were separated from the Father and we had the inability to know the Father. So when we don't have the ability to know the Father, it is spiritual death because spiritual, we are spiritually relationally separated. So Jesus came to give that life to show us. So how did he come to give that life was to reveal the father. How can we now know the father? By knowing the father. How do we know the father? He reveals the father to us. How does he reveal the father? When we believe in his death, burial, resurrection, the truth of the resurrection and the reality of the resurrection becomes a reality and we are resurrected with him. And now the Holy Spirit now lives in us. Right? So Jesus said, and me and my father will dwell, will come to dwell in you. So now, when we become born again, we are in the Father and the Father is in us. Mutual indwelling. So how is that mutual indwelling possible? Through Jesus. Okay? So now, he sent the Holy Spirit. Now he said, unless he, the Holy Spirit comes. So now the Holy Spirit came. So when the Spirit of God lives in us, he's in us. So the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, they are all in us now. Yeah? So we are in the, now we are also in the father through Jesus. So there is a mutual indwelling. So because Jesus is in us, he constantly reveals the father to us. Okay. Now, the only thing is we don't focus on this truth. We just think about going to heaven by knowing, accepting Jesus. Like we look at going to heaven as, oh, God is angry. He'll send us to hell. So before he sends me to hell, I will accept Jesus. Escape hell and take the last flight to him. But salvation has nothing to do with heaven. Salvation has nothing to do with going to heaven. Heaven is not our reward. Heaven is not our reward. Heaven was not created for man. Heaven is the seat of authority from where God operates because he is a spirit. He is in a spiritual realm, which is a created realm, which is heaven. But we are also created beings, but physical beings with a spirit. So he gave us an earth, which is a created physical reality. And he is in a created spiritual reality. And he is bringing that spiritual reality into this physical reality which is called earth because he is in heaven and everything is perfect there he says be one with me and when you know me you receive life and you bring the reality of heaven to earth rule and take dominion on earth like how I am ruling he heaven by knowing him we are receiving life. By having this life, we are one with him. And we are mutually indwelling with him. He in us and we in him. And we are co-laboring with him to inhabit earth. And we are producing offspring. What happens when we produce offspring? We are teaching them also about the ways of God. So when they come of age, they, now the offspring also begin to become a temple of God. The offspring also become mutually indwelling with God. And God is not dwelling in each and every human being who is a temple. And then every human being, wherever they go, they go and spread all over the earth. They're bringing heaven on earth because God is in them. They are in God and they are bringing the kingdom everywhere. So God is interested in that co-laboring. As much as he wants to participate, he also wants us to participate as co-laboring. 
So he has his part. We have our part. We co-labor together by his grace and we begin to spread his kingdom. So this whole going to heaven, heaven is just a waiting place. For the spirit of every Christian that dies, heaven is where they wait. As the cloud of witnesses. That is the cloud that received Jesus in Acts chapter 1. The Bible says, and Jesus went up and a cloud received him. Who was the cloud? Those were the people who resurrected with Christ. The Bible says that when Christ resurrected, many of the Old Testament saints were resurrected and they were seen around. They were waiting for Jesus' ascension. So when Jesus was at the mountain, they were all waiting in the cloud. So Jesus was received by them. And that's what it says in Hebrews chapter 12. Behold, there is what? A cloud of witnesses. Therefore, what? Run. Laying down every sin that weighs you down and run. Fixing your eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. So that cloud is in, in the spiritual realm. And that is where Jesus is. So Jesus is surrounded by the cloud. So every believer who died in Christ becomes that cloud of witnesses. Jesus receives them now. So the first believer who Jesus received after his ascension was Stephen. Remember, Jesus stood up and Stephen said, Behold, I see the Son of Man standing. So he receives, Jesus receives the first uh, believer who he comes to heaven. So all these people are waiting for us to run the race, for us to finish the task. The main thing is on earth, not in heaven. Everybody in heaven is waiting for human beings to come into the full understanding of what the Father wants on earth. While the church is preaching, we are all going to be raptured and going to heaven. God is waiting. When will you guys understand that you are supposed to be on earth and rule and reign on earth? You are supposed to bring heaven on earth. You are supposed to bring and establish my kingdom on earth. So the whole shift has gone from knowing the Father, eternal life, bringing heaven on earth into Father was angry with me. Instead of me, he punished Jesus. Oh, thank God I'm safe. I just believe in Jesus and go to heaven. That's all. That's my Christian life. What a useless, waste Christian life. We were created for purpose, not just to escape. If believing in Jesus is escaping this earth and going to heaven, <laughs> that doesn't make sense to me at all. But if we see scripturally, he has already reconciled us back to the Father. Knowing the Father is eternal life. Going to heaven is not eternal life. Amen? Knowing the Father is eternal life. When did we receive? We are now. We are now eternal beings now. Your spirit is alive. Your spirit knows the Father. The only thing is, we have been taught, you know, one day you will die and then you will go to heaven. So we are all waiting for death. We're all waiting for death to happen. But when was the last time somebody told you, sin, you received eternal life. You're bringing heaven on earth. Amen? That gives me hope. Wow. I can preach hope to my generation. I can, I can tell people that no, we can defeat, we can overcome. We are called to rule and reign. Amen. If not our generation, the next generation will catch it. The only problem is every generation is preaching doom and gloom. Pessimistic gospel. Jesus said, I, he has finished the work, man. But the church has made heaven a reward and hell a punishment. No. God did not Create hell because of punishment. Hell was created for Satan. Hell was not created for man. Hell was created for Satan. God does not desire any man to go to hell. 
there is grace available for even the worst of the worst of the worst sinners to, 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 to come into eternal life. It's like this. Father has, imagine the father has many children and he loves them all the same. He wants them to know him. The problem is not God is angry because they're living in sin. God is hurt because they don't know him. It's different. Let me, exp let me repeat that again. God is not angry that they are not listening to him. God is hurt that they do not know him. <coughs> that is why he sent his son that we may know him. That is why we preach the gospel. Not because they can accept him and go to heaven. Jesus is not a ticket to heaven. But he has been preached as if he is a ticket to heaven. But he is not a ticket to heaven. He is the way to the Father. It's so different. It's completely different. But why do we go to heaven? Because when our body dies, there is nowhere for our spirit to go. Because our spirit is eternal. And it, and it is a spirit. It is not physical. And spirits cannot stay on earth without a human body. So they go and wait in heaven. Until the spirits are given glorious bodies. That's why the Bible says, those who are resurrected, those who are dead in Christ will receive the glorious body, will put on mortality, immortality, and then those who are alive. So a day will come, then those who are on earth will understand this immortality that we are supposed to be a rule and reign on earth. They will receive the glorious body on earth those who are alive, then those who are in heaven will also receive the glorious body and then listen, we are not going to heaven. Jesus is coming down with the cloud who went ahead of us. Then we will be joined with them and we are not going to heaven and we will bring Jesus to earth. Remember the parable of the ten virgins? The foolish ones and the wise ones. The foolish ones went away to get the oil. The wise ones were waiting with the oil. And when the bridegroom came, that's Jesus. The wise ones are us who are waiting with the knowledge of God, with the word of God. And we are waiting for the bridegroom who is Jesus. And now listen, we are not going to heaven. He's coming to us. And the Bible says, and they took him to where they were. They did not go to the bridegroom's house. They did not go to the bridegroom's father's house. That clue is given in Genesis also. Therefore, for this reason, a husband and wife will become one and they will leave the father's house. Right? So when Jesus comes, we bring we, we we usher him to earth and we will and that's when he comes and then the knowledge of god will begin to spread on earth and will rule and reign on earth on earth heaven and earth becomes one it becomes one reality and we work work with god you know we, we are in mutual indwelling with him and that's when total reality starts Okay, it is not about escaping the disasters of earth and escaping to heaven, which is a glorious, smoky, gold streets. No, um, you know, gold streets of heaven, all these things. I, I listen when the Bible talks about the new Jerusalem, it is a prophetic language that is used. I don't believe that we'll be riding chariots on a gold street. We will be right here on earth. And the earth will be the way it was before the fall. Every human being will have a glorious body. What does a glorious body look like? The body that Jesus had when he resurrected. Let me ask you a question. Heaven is a spiritual place, right? There is nothing physical. But did Jesus become a human being? 
when he was resurrected, was he given a human body, a glorious body, which resembled a human? Yes. The body that Adam had before his fall, before the fall, the glorious body that Jesus had, the body that cannot decay, the body that cannot die, the body. But he still had hunger. He ate food. <laughs> they could touch him. So you're not going to be a ghost floating around in uh, heaven for eternity. Lost in a sea of white uh, people wearing white robes. We will be on earth with Jesus ruling and reigning. Um, forever eternity, we will be together. That is our future. That is the glorious destiny that we have. Paul talks about your setting our minds on things which are about because he's talking about there are principles of this world. Don't follow them. God, God's seat of authority and his dominion is heaven. So we are of we are in this world, not of this world. Meaning, when he talks about the world, he's talking about the world system, he's not talking about the earth. So there is a difference between world and earth. There is a difference between heaven and earth. Okay, so when he talks about the world, he is not talking about the earth. He's not talking about geographical locations. He's talking about the systems. He's talking about the seat of authority. He's talking about what is dominating and ruling. Okay, so it's it's going to take a lot of work because I know I know a lot of us grew up with this very legalistic gospel which said believe in jesus to make heaven no 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 we don't believe in jesus to make heaven people say make heaven make heaven no 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 i am not called to make heaven i'm called to know the father amen when i believe in jesus jesus reveals the father to me and knowing the father is eternal life I enter eternity by knowing the Father, which is my eternal life. When this physical body dies, there is no place for the spirit to go. So it waits in heaven until the time comes on earth when people come into realization and they receive a glorious body. Then we too who are in heaven, are, you know, God willing, if we receive our glorious body now, those who went ahead of us will receive the glorious body. And that is what the Bible talks about, the catching away caught up in the air into the cloud. So when the Bible talks about being caught up into the cloud, it is talking about the cloud of witnesses. So the cloud of witnesses will also receive the glorious body. Be on earth will also receive the glorious body and caught up meaning will come into realization that we are both now united. So it will be the greatest reunion of heaven and earth and, and Jesus will bring heaven on earth and that's what it's going to look like. Amen. So that is the glorious gospel that we have. Praise the Lord. So, um, Joseph. Yes. Yeah. Did you did you get that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have any more questions? Uh, no, that was that was my question. That's good. Yeah. That is that is that more clear now? Yeah. Yeah. Um, just. Go patient, be patient. I know because, you know, it's a lot of processing the way we used to think. And I'm, I'm teaching a very optimistic view of the gospel, you know. So it is the way we think now is changing. Mm. So, you know, uh, you will come across people who, who will stand for penal substitution, who say, no, no, no. This and that. Look, there's going to be opinions everywhere. Uh, but at the end of the day, you guys have to, um, you know, study scripture, the scriptures I'm giving you, the, what I'm teaching you, you know, study them, read the verses I give you, and think, think, think. You know, I'm not going to force you to, hey, this is what you must believe in. No. This is my personal belief, this is my conviction. And that's what I teach, you know, and this is something that the Holy Spirit has been teaching and working in my life, right? And uh, like, look, you can be in life from church and say, hey, but Pastor, I, I believe in rapture. 
you know, can I still stay in Life of Church? It's up to you. <laughs> you can still stay in you know, Life of Church. You can still believe in rapture. I'm not going to say, oh, you don't believe in rapture, so, you know, you can't be my, you can't be a member of Life of Church. But, Pastor, what about you? Do you believe in rapture? No, I don't believe in rapture. I don't believe you'll be raptured at all. Um, I don't believe in rapture at all. I believe that rapture is something that I completely disagree with. And I don't teach about it anymore because it doesn't make sense to me anymore. But can you still be part of Life Rock Church if you believe? Absolutely. You know, you can be part of Life Rock Church. You know, uh, but Pastor, I don't believe that uh, Jesus died then. I'm sorry that we, you, we need to have a conversation. I don't believe in the virgin birth of Jesus. No, 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 no. There we got a problem. Oh, I don't believe in the resurrection. Now we got a problem. You know, but oh, I don't believe in him. I believe that there's going to be an antichrist. Uh, Pastor, do you believe in the antichrist? No, I don't believe in the antichrist. Can we still be friends? Yes, we can be friends. Okay. Those are the minors. The major is uh, the foundations of Christ, all those things. But of course, these things, I would want you to grow into them. Want you to, you know, um, eventually just understand. Um, but there are some areas. See, everybody will have, you know, different ways of looking at things. And this is how I look at it. And I, this is how I want to teach you guys. Um, so maturity is about you may or may not accept and understand everything I'm saying right now. But maturity is still walking together. Okay. Um, and being able to work together. So those are the minors. The majors are, we believe in the resurrection of Christ. We believe in the virgin birth of Christ. We believe in the death, burial, or resurrection. Oh, but, oh penal, penal substitution makes more sense to me. I don't, I don't want to believe in uh, Christus Victor. That's totally up to you. Okay. For me, I'm moving in the relational gospel. I believe that God is a relational God who wants to relate with me. And it was never about sin. But it was, it was never about moral sin. It was always about relational separation. The relational separation led us to moral sin. Okay? So we may have it's, it's minor differences here and there. But it's all about, you know, uh, having a conversation uh, and growing in those truths. Okay? So these, I don't expect everybody to just catch it right now. Oh, Pastor, if you said it, I'm going to believe, <laughs> study for yourself. You know, these are things I will say, study for yourself. Think about it. And then when you have questions, come and ask me. Uh, challenge me. Say, Pastor, but this, this, I'm not able to get this. Can you explain? You said like this. So challenge me so that I can also come up with more scripture and backing to teach. And you know, I also want to grow. I also want to understand more and more about you know, what I'm teaching. And uh, this whole year has been a major eye opener for me to understand and grow in the relational gospel because for a long time I believed, very long, I myself believed that I used to preach, like even a lot of grace preachers preached that Jesus died on our behalf. I was supposed to die, but he died. It doesn't make sense to me anymore. Because when he died, I died. When he was res buried, I was buried. When he was resurrected, I was resurrected. It was the reconciliation work of Jesus to bring me to the Father. It was always about relationship. It was never about the problem of sin. Sin was never a problem for God. Me not knowing him was his problem. Let me ask you a question. If you are a parent and if your child doesn't know you but he's smoking I don't think you will be so concerned about the smoking as much as him not knowing you. The first thing you will meet him and you'll be like, why are you smoking? I don't think you'll do that. I'm sorry that you don't know me. Is there a way that we can be reconciled? Is there a way that you can know that I have loved you from the beginning? That would be the heart cry of every parent. And I say that because I know that we know. For me, 
the greatest joy comes from knowing that my son knows me. Every day I go to work, I feel like I'm leaving a part of me at home. Imagine how much more for our Heavenly Father. He's not so much concerned about those moral sins. Of course, he wants to work on them. He wants to work on them. Don't get me wrong. But the number one priority is that you know him. And the way that we know him is through his son. Because his son now reveals him to us. That is our elder brother Jesus who has gone to be with the father. He, when he died, he died. He, that's why on Sunday I preached, consumed by life. He consumed us into his life, brought us into the experience that he went through. He entered into the belly of our darkness. He entered into the place of separation that man went through. And in that place, he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The very next second, he says, into your hands, I commit my spirit. He went into darkness and the next minute he gave it into his father. And then the father responded by accepting his blood. And he said, son, you can come into the Holy of so Holy. And when Jesus went into the Holy of so Holy, he presented every one of us holy and acceptable to the father. And through his blood, our, our conscience, which was so marred by sin, was washed clean. Our sins were forgiven. And every sin that condemned us and every sin that made us feel miserable, the blood started speaking a better thing over our life. It was always about reconciliation, never about punishment. We choose the end result, not God. God's ultimate end result for us is life. He says, choose life. Choose life. It is now up to us whether we choose life or death. And life we choose by choosing his son and saying, Jesus, I believe. The moment we believe, he reveals the father to us. Amen. Father, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you for you revealed your father to us. And we have received the Holy Spirit by whom we cry, Abba. We cry, Abba, Father. Lord, with our own strength and understanding, we cannot cry, Abba, Father, except by the Spirit of God. Jesus, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for making the way for us, Lord, by canceling death and sin on the cross, by canceling our death on the cross, by defeating sin and death, oh Lord, by your power that works in us, that raised us up and made us sit in heavenly places with you, Lord. It was always about reconciliation. It was always about relationship and family. Thank you, Jesus. We submit and surrender our life to your Lordship. We submit and surrender our life into your hands. Father, I speak grace upon everybody listening to this podcast, this, this uh, message right now. And I speak life right now. May they know the Father. Though, Lord, if there is someone listening, He's not a believer. Let them know the Father through the Son. We receive, just receive the Spirit by faith right now. We give you the glory, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen.